All right, hello. Um, we're now looking at section 4.2 of Rosen's text, integer representations and algorithms. Now, I'm going to look at one of the most basic examples of an integer representation, which you're all familiar with, the decimal representation of the number 8,374. All right, so consider the re representation 8,374. Now we're so used to dealing in base 10, where the first digit in this case represents a thousand, so eight times a thousand. The second digit is the hundreds place, so three times a hundred. The third digit is the tens place, so seven times ten, and the last digit is the ones place, or four in this case. But I could represent that using uh, powers, exponents of ten, uh, powers of ten. So of course a thousand is ten to the third power, a hundred is ten to the second power, ten is ten to the first power, and one is ten to the zero power. So I could actually represent this as 8 times 10 to the third plus 3 times 10 to the second plus 7 times 10 to the first time, or plus 4 times 10 to the zero power. So we're using base 10 and we're very familiar with that. But we are going to be looking in this section at using other numbers as the base besides 10. All right. Now the theorem that uh, is presented first, theorem 1, basically says this. Let b be an integer greater than 1. If n is a positive integer, that n can be represented ex or expressed uniquely in the form n equals a sub k, su subscript k, which means some coefficient number. Uh, times b to the k power. Now notice b is our base. b is our base. So up in the example I just talked about, it would have been base 10. But this applies to any base. So 8 is like the a sub k in the example if we're comparing, uh, we're comparing these two notations. Now a sub k minus 1 uh, is the next coefficient. And the base is 10 again, in, in the case of this example up here. And then you have k minus 1, because the exponent's going down by 1. It's 3, 2, 1, 0, as in the example. And then it goes all the way down until you hit um, a1b to the first, which is like 7 times 10 to the first, and then plus a0. Now, it's optional whether you want to put 10 to the 0 or, or base to the 0 power at the end, or you just want to have a 0. But um, notice k was some non-negative integer, so you know some positive or 0 integer. And um, the a k, I'm sorry, the a 0, a 1, a 2, a 3, all the way up to a k are non-negative integers. Uh, less than b. Now notice all those have to be less than b. Like for example, the base is 10 here, so we can't have a number out in front here that's greater than or equal to 10. It has to be less than 10. So that's why our digits are 0 up to 9, and we never have a digit that's uh, greater than 9. All right. Now we have a two-digit number that's greater than 9, of course, but not a one-digit number that's greater than 9. And I have a comment here, uh, a, sub, uh, a sub k cannot be 0. So you, um, if you had a, a sub k being 0, then that first term would be 0. So you wouldn't even write that first term. So um, anyway, the last term can be written as a 0, b to the 0. Like I was saying here, um, you could write it as a 0, b to the 0, and it would be the same thing. All right, now here's an example. We can write the number 43 as the sum of the powers of 3. So what we're trying to do is think of 
what times 3 to the third power plus what times 3 to the second power plus what times 3 to the first power plus what times 3 to the zero power. Now you might ask, why didn't we start with 3 to the fourth power or 3 to the fifth power? Well, 3 to the fourth power is 81, which is greater than 43. So we're not going to use 3 to the fourth power. But 3 to the third power is 27. So that's not greater than 43. So we'll start at the power of 3 that's less than, that's as high as it can be, but still less than 43. All right. So now you can fit how many 27s inside of the number 43? Just one, right? So we're just going to have one 27. And then if you subtract 43 minus 27, what do you get? Well, you get um, 16. And then you look at the next number down, which is 3 squared. Now, 3 squared is 9. Can you fit 9 inside of 16? Yes. Okay. But only one 9. So then you subtract 16 minus 9 and you get 7. Okay. Then you look at the next power down, 3 to the first power. Well, 3 to the first power is 3. And so how many 3s fit inside of 7, our leftover amount? It was two 3s. So this time we're going to have two 3s uh, in, the, in the expression. And, well, 2 3s is 6, so we take 7 minus 6, and we get 1 left over. So 1 is the remainder, okay? Now, looking at just the coefficients, the number is 1, 1, 2, 1, all right? So that right there is what we call the base 3 representation of the number 43. So the number 43, if we were using base 3, would be 1, 1, 2, 1. Okay? Now, why is it that we use base 10 in our society and in history? Why do have all throughout history, all different cultures used base 10? Although there's some cultures that didn't use base 10. But why do most cultures use base 10? because we have 10 fingers, exactly. So we could count on 10 fingers, but then after that, we had to use uh, go to another place value up higher. You know, so we have the ones place, the tens place, the hundreds place, the thousands place, etc. All right. Now, there are some cultures that only use base five because they're only counting on one hand. Uh, there are some cultures, like the Mayans, I believe, that used base 20, because I guess they're counting their fingers and their toes. But in, in computer applications, sometimes we want to use different bases and not just base 10. So this illustration shows that how to write 43 as, as a number in base 3. Okay? Now, let's look at some other examples of this. Um, binary numbers. Now, you know that binary numbers are base 2 numbers, right? Now, in any base, you can only have digits for that base up to one less than what the base is. So if the base is base 2, you only can go up to 1. So that's why the digits in base 2, binary, is only a 0 and a 1. Now in base 3, we can only have 0, 1, or 2 for our digits. Okay. In, of course, base 10, as we mentioned, we can go from 0 up to 9. Anyway, all right. So if I have the base 2 number, one zero one one zero one 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 in base two. And we use this parentheses with the subscript re referring to the base. Then what would that be as a base ten number? Or actually, it's the question is asking write the expansion, the binary expansion of the number. All right. Now what I would do if I were you is start from the right side of the number. Okay, 
remember that in the theorem at the beginning, it was some coefficient times the base to the zero power. Well, the, the, anything to the zero power is one. So this is one, one. And then the base to the first power, so we're kind of reading it backwards, the base to the first power, and then the base to the second power, and the base to the third power, and base to the fourth power, all the way up. So how high, how far do we have to go? Well, this is um, to the zero power. This is to the first power, second power, third power, fourth power, fifth power, sixth power, seventh power. So the initial one on this base two number is one times two to the seventh power. Then you have a zero, so it's zero times two to the sixth power. And then you have one times two to the fifth, and then you have one times two to the fourth, and then the next digit is a zero, so zero times two to the third, plus one times two to the second, plus one times two to the first, plus one. Now you could say one times two to the zero, but that would still be just one, all right? Now, if you do the calculations and take two to the seventh power and take one of those, and then take two to the fifth power and take one of those, of course, we don't have any two to the sixth because it's zero times that. Anyway, add one times two to the fourth, and then add one times two to the second, and add one times two to the first, and then add one you get our regular base 10 number of 183. So in other words, that binary number is equal to 183 in base 10, what we're familiar with. Now, it didn't ask for the base 10 number, but if you wanted it, that's what it would be. All right, next example, write the octal expansion of the number. 4, 5, 2, 7 in base 8. Now, octal just refers to base 8. And so the powers of base 8, well, start with 8 to the 0 power, which is just 1. So you could just write 1 or 7 times 1 because that first digit going from the right to the left is a 7. Then you have 2 times 8 to the first power. Then you have 5 times 8 to the second power, and then 4 times 8 to the third power. Now, if you did the math and calculated all that, 4 times 8 to the third plus 5 times 8 to the second plus 2 times 8 to the first plus 7, you would get the base 10 number 2,391 in base 10, or what you know we're used to. But you, it didn't ask for that. It just wanted you to give the expansion of it. Now, if I was to convert from base 7 to base 10, okay, then we would ju just do what we just did, and you want the answer to be a base 10 number. Now, the number is 5342 base 7. So our powers of 7 are 7 to the 0 power, which is for the last place value, 7 to the first power, 7 to the second power, and then 7 to the third power. So this number expanded out would be 5 times 7 to the third power plus 3 times 7 to the second power plus 4 times 7 to the first power plus 2. And if you calculate that, you know, try it on the calculator. You can verify what I'm saying, but it equals 1892 or 1892 in our base 10 numbers. Okay. Now, I'm going to take a whole page talking about hexadecimal representation. Hexadecimal is important for computer languages and computer um, technology. Um, Hexadecimal means base 16. Hexa means 6, decimal means 10, so it's 6 plus 10 or, or 16, base 16. So we need 16 different symbols starting from 0. Because remember, in base 10, you need 10 symbols, 0 and then 1 through 9. So that's a total of 10 digits. But in base 16, we need 
16 digits. So that goes from 0 and then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. But you can't put 10 because that's using two symbols. So you don't put a 10. You use the letter A to represent 10. Then B to represent 11. C to represent 12. D to represent 13. E to represent 14. And F to represent 15. Okay? So we're going to use A through F to represent the numbers 10 through 15 uh, that you would use in decimal notation. If you wanted to represent 15, you'd use 1, 5. But instead of that, we're going to use F. So it says write the hexadecimal expansion of the number 2AE0B, okay, in base 16. Now, the base, the, uh, the powers, first of all, think about those. Um, you're going to have 16 to the 0 power. You're always going to start with the 0 power on, on the, uh, the, the right side. And then it's 16 to the 1st, 16 to the 2nd, 16 to the 3rd, and 16 to the 4th because you have a total of five digits to take care of. Now, you are going to use that, the fact that A represents 10, E represents 14, and B represents 11. Okay, so this is 2 times 16 to the fourth power plus A, but A represents 10, so 10 times 16 to the third power plus 14 times, because E is 14, 14 times 16 to the second power, and then there's a 0, so 0 times 16 to the first power, and then plus B. Well, B stands for 11, so that's how it ends. If you calculate that, do all the math to, you know, on your calculator to get that, this equals 175,627 in our base 10. Um, in case you needed that, you don't, this problem didn't ask for that, but, uh, it just wanted the expansion, hexadecimal expansion. Okay. Now computer programmers working with hexadecimal and binary representations, they know that every four bits or binary digits, every four ones and zeros or binary digits, in binary representations can represent one hexadecimal digit. Okay, do you realize that? For every hexadecimal digit, it equals four ones and zeros. Okay, so uh, four in base 10, so our number four that you think of when you think of four in base 10 is the same as the number four in base 16. But in binary, it's 0, 1, 0, 0 in base 2, okay? Um, also, 13 in our base 10, that's represented by D in base 16, right? The letter D stands for 13. But 13 can be written as 1101. Now, how do I know 13 equals 1101 in base 2? Well, the first place on the right side of binary is the 1's place. So we'll add 1. Plus, now the second place is the 2's, 2 to the first power, but there's none of those. The third place over is 2 to the second power. 2 to the second power is 4. And there is one of those, so we add the 1 plus the 4. And then the next space over is 2 to the 3rd power. What's 2 to the 3rd power? That's 8. So if we take um, 5, which is what we've got at this point, the 1 and the 1 here, and add 8, you get 13. So this 13 in base 2 is 1101. Okay? So... In every, uh, for every one hexadecimal digit, it can be represented with four binary digits, okay? Now, an 8-bit or one-byte binary number, now a byte 
is 8 bits or 2, 4, um, they're called nibbles, I've heard before, but anyway, um, my wife is laughing at me, but that's the case. Um, 4 bits plus another 4 bits makes a whole byte, and we can rep, uh, easily change it to a 2-digit hexadecimal number. Okay, so look at the example here. Um, we have an 8-bit binary number, 1110, and then 0111. We, to convert that to a base 16, you can just look at 4 bits at a time and translate each of those into a hexadecimal number. Now, 1110 means 18 plus one four plus one two so that adds up to 14. Now 14 in hexadecimal is the letter E. Okay so that's how I got the E here and then you look at the next four digits 0 1 1 1 all right well that represents a 4 plus a 2 plus a 1. Well 4 plus 2 plus 1 equals 7. So that's how I got 7 for the second hexadecimal number. So this binary number can be converted pretty easily into the hexadecimal number E7. All right? So you don't have to change the binary number into a decimal number, base 10 number first, and then try to go from the decimal number to the hexadecimal number. You can go directly from either a binary number to a hexadecimal number, or vice versa using this four bits cha changes to one hexadecimal number uh, conversion. All right. Now, there is a way to convert a base 10 number, like we're used to, into other bases because we have, uh, we, we know how to divide. Um, and so this is an, an algorithm that will show us how to go from a base 10 number to another base. So here's an example. To convert 147 base 10 to base 5, we would divide successively, okay, one after another. Um, the remainders will be our digits in the base 5 representation, okay? so. Suppose we start off, we're going to begin here at dividing 5 into 147. Okay, now 5 goes into 147 29 times with a remainder of 2. Okay, so first we divide 5 into 147 and we get 29 with a remainder of 2. So just write that. Then we divide again by 5. So you divide 29 by 5 again. Well, 20, uh, 5 goes into 29 5 times with a remainder of 4. All right, so you go on, and then 5 goes into 5 1 time with a remainder of 0. And don't stop this until you get a, a quotient of 0. Don't worry about the remainders. You, you got to keep going until you get a quotient of zero, as I did at the top of this pyramid. <laughs> so five goes into one zero times because five, you can't, there's no, there's zero fives inside of one, but it has a remainder of one. So that means that the answer for the decimal, I'm sorry, base five representation of that number 147 is 1042, 1042 in base 5. Now to verify this, you can go 2 plus 4 times 5 to the first power, plus 0 times 5 to the second power, plus 1 times 5 to the third power. Add that all up, and it should equal 147. Okay? Now, Here's another example. Find the hexadecimal expansion of the number 
25,061 in base 10. Okay? So, 25,061 in base 10. Okay? Now, we are going to successfully successively divide 25061 by 16. Now, I'm not doing it in the way I just did in the previous example. I'm showing you another way to do it, which is going to be useful later. So try to learn this other way. But 25,061, first you divide that by 16. So it's 16 times the quotient. So you put your quotient right here, plus the remainder of 5. Okay, then you take the, the quotient, 1566, and divide that by 16. Well, uh, it goes into it 97 times, because 16 times 97 uh, is just less than 1566. But it leaves a remainder of 14. 14. Now, that seems strange, but we're so used to base 10, where you can only have a remainder between 0 and 9, but in base 16, we can have a remainder between 0 and 15, okay? You can go up to the, from 0 to 15 as your remainder. All right, so then you take 97 and divide that by 16, uh, 16 times 6, plus a remainder of 1, and then you take 6, that would equal 16 times 0 with a remainder of 6. Now, remember, you always go until the quotient is 0. Okay, make sure you go all the way until the quotient is 0. And that is 6. So, this time, though, um, here we, we went downward for our numbers, you know, that we ended up across. But in this method, you know, instead of, see, you're going upward in the division, uh, here you're going down with the division, so you're going to have to use the numbers from bottom to top if you're using this method. So the num the remainders from bottom to top are 6, 1, 14, 5. Now 14, you know, is the letter E. So this is 6, 1, E, 5 in base 16. And like I said, you notice you're going from the bottom up, um, so you reverse the order here. All right, uh, another example, find the binary expansion of the number 243 base 10. So our number 243. So our base is base 2, so we're going to su successively divide quotients by 2. Okay, so 243 is 2 times 121 plus 1, so our remainder is 1. But then you take 121. Well, that's 2 times 60 plus 1. Then you take 60. Well, 60 is 2 times 30, but it goes in evenly, so the remainder is 0. And then you take 30. That's 2 times 15, so that goes in evenly, so that's 0, remainder. And then you take 15, and it's 2 times 7 plus 1. And then 7 equals 2 times 3 plus 1. And then 3 equals 2 times 1 plus 1. And then 1 equals 2 times 0 plus 1. Now, we ended up with a quotient of 0, so we're done. And we read this backwards from, from bottom to top, I should say. So the number is 1111001 1, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1 in base 2. So you can verify this by doing the binary expansion of that binary number and see if it equals 243, but it should. Now, table 1 is a useful table that Rosen has in his text, and it's comparing decimal representations, which are base 10, so 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So on the 10th number, it starts to use two digits and then goes on as you're used to. Hexadecimal, though, when does it start using two digits? It's not until you get to the 16th number. Uh, all right, so this never even in this whole chart uses two digits. It only uses one. Octal 
Well, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. But you cannot have any digits greater than seven when you're dealing with base eight. So at that point, then you say one, zero. Because that one there doesn't represent one, ten. It represents one, eight. Okay? And then this second number that's one, one looks like our 11, but it's not. It, it means one, eight and one, one, of course, which means nine. This means one, eight plus two ones. This means one, eight plus three ones, one, eight plus four ones, etc. All right. Now, binary, it even it uses even more digits, of course. So here's how to count in binary. 0, 1, 1, 0, which represents 1, 2, but no 1s. So it represents 2. 3 is represented by 1, 2, and 1, 1. So 1, 1. 4 is represented by 1, 2 squared, which is 1, 4, and no 2s and no 1s. 5 is represented by 1, 4, and 1, 1. 6 is represented by 1, 4, and 2, I'm sorry, and 1, 2. 1, 4, and 1, 2, which makes 6. 7 is represented by 1, 4, and 1, 2, and 1, 1, which adds up to 7. And then to represent 8, you need 4 digits, um, you know, because that place value represents 2 to the 3rd power. 2 to the 3rd power is 8. So that's 1, 8, and nothing else. 1, 8, and 1, 1 makes 9, etc. So you can follow this and perhaps refer to it. Now, Rosen gives an algorithm to convert numbers to a base, uh, any particular base you want. So this is a computer algorithm, or a procedure, or a little sub-program that you can include in your programming that will calculate the base B expansion or base B representation of a number. Okay, Now it's going to convert to base B some number N, so N is the input into this procedure. Um, N is a base 10 number, we're assuming N is a base 10 number. Okay. Uh, and then you're, that's the input into the procedure. And you also input the base. So it has to know what base you're dealing with. All right. Then the output will be the coefficients, ak minus 1, ak minus 2, ak minus 3, all the way to a, to a sub 1, a sub 0, which are given in the last command of this algorithm, the return command. Um, so that's the output of the representation. Now, this uh, this is the expression it would end up with if you wanted to write it in the expansion, or it'll just basically give these numbers in the base B representation. Okay. So what does this algorithm do? First of all, it lets a quotient, the quotient equal the original number. Okay, then it lets k start at 0. Now, while the quotient is not 0, see, it's going to continue and continue and continue until the quotient is 0, and it'll stop, just like the algorithm we showed on the last couple slides. So um, it's going to do this while loop until the quotient is zero. Now what does it do? Well first it lets a sub k be the remainder. Remember mod gives the remainder when you divide the quotient which starts off as the letter the number n by the base b. Okay so that's a sub k and then it lets the new quotient become equal to the qu the previous quotient divided by b. Okay, um, so it's continuing to use the previous quotient but divided by b. 
um, and then it increases k, the exponent, by 1, right? So it just keeps going through that loop and it will return the, uh, the number. So you can look at example 7 on page 249 uh, also to look at how um, this number, this is not using the algorithm, this example 7 on page 249, but it's just a good example of converting uh, the number, the binary number here into base 8 or into base 16. Okay, it's kind of the reverse of what we were doing before. Now, algorithm 2 is an algorithm for adding two binary numbers. So there might be some computer application where you needed some subprogram that could add two binary numbers together. And this is how to do that. But you can look at that on page 251. But we can also do this by hand. So let's say we had a problem that said add 11011 in base 2 with 1010 in base 2 um, by hand. So this is the way you line them up just like you would in any addition problem in elementary school. But whenever you see 1 plus 1, you know that equals 2, but you can't represent 2 in base 2 with a, with the number 2 because the digits the only digits that are allowed are 0 and 1 so anytime you have 1 plus 1 it becomes 1 0 and what we'll do is carry the 1 to the next digit over okay so all right let's do this 1 plus 0 is 1 so that one's normal 1 plus 1 now 1 plus 1 is 1 0 so we put down a 0, and then we carry a 1 right here. Now, I didn't show it, but I'm, I'm talking about it now. It would be like carrying a 1 into the next digit. So now you have 1 plus 0 plus 0, which is 1, right? Then next place value over, 1 plus 1. Again, 1 plus 1 is 1, 0, so you put, put down a 0 and carry another 1 to the next place over right here. Um, and so if I added a 1 and a 1, that equals 1, 0 again. So you put down a 0, and then you put a 1 in the next place over. So that's the number 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1 in base 2. Okay? Now, if we were to want to check this to make sure it's correct, what we could do is convert each of these numbers into base 10 and then just add them together. Now this number, let me think for a second. This is 16 plus 8, which is 24, plus 2, which is 26, plus 1, which is 27. So this is adding the number 27. And then 1010, 0, 0, that is 8 plus 2, or 10. So we have 27 plus 10, which is 37. Well, is this 37? Well, let's see. This is the ones place. This is the fours place, because that was the two, and then the four, and then eight, 16, 32. So this is 32 plus four, which is 36, plus one, which is 37. So it does work out, you know, if you look at the base 10 numbers, okay? Now, algorithm 3 gives a procedure for multiplying two binary numbers. Now, we can also do this by hand. So, let's suppose we were multiplying 101 base 2 and 110 base 2. Okay? Now, you know if you're doing it by hand, uh, it would be similar to the algorithm we use since grade school how do you multiply a number times a number? Uh, well, you know, you'd go 0 times each of those digits, which is 0, 0, 0. And then 1 times each of those, which is 101. But you'd move it over one space. So I've inserted this purple 0 here. And then you do that again. 1 times 101 is 101. But you have to add now two zeros um, or just move it over another place. 
and then you add downwards so you get 0, 1, 1, 1, and 1. So the answer is 1, 1, 1, 1, 0 in base 2. Now the algorithm does it a different way, okay? Because when you're doing a computer program, it can't visualize the vertical and columns and all of that. It has to have some computer step-by-step -step procedure to do this, okay? So what it does is um, it multiplies a times whatever the digit B0 is. Now the B0, okay, so this is the A. A is 101, all right? We're calling A the first number, and we're calling B the second number. But the far right digit of B is B0. The next digit is B1, and the next digit is B2. So B0, B1, B2. Okay, so what we do is multiply a times b0 and then multiply it times 2 to the, that power. Okay, so um, 101 is the a times b0. Now b0 was the, zero, the, the far right digit of b, which is 0, and then times 2 to the 0 power. Well, anything to the 0 powers, that would be just 0. In the next case, a, which is 101, base 2, times b to the first power, I'm sorry, b, b1, which it means the, the next digit over, which is this one right here, this, the middle digit of the b number, which is 1. So we go that times 1, and then 2 to the first power. Now what does multiplying by 2 to the first power in base 2 do to the number? It actually moves everything over a digit. To the, to the left, okay? Just like multiplying by 10 in our system moves all the digits over to the left one digit, okay? But this is in base two, so it, it does that just by multiplying two to the first power. So you notice I moved the 101 from the A number over one digit, so it's 101, zero. And then the next one, likewise, it multiplies it by 2 to the second power. Well, that moves it over two spaces to the left. And so it's 101, 0, 0. So it does really what this by hand algorithm does, but it does it with the calculations like this. And then it just add, adds them together, uh, which you could call into action alg alg algorithm number two to add the, the results together. And then the check of this is to convert them into um, base 10 numbers. Now, 101 is 5 in base 10. 110 is 6 in base 10. So 5 times 6 is 30. And 30 in base 10 is the answer we wanted, 11110. Okay? Algorithm 4 traces steps needed to find the quotient and the remainder when a is divided by d, okay? But that's not as important as the next algorithm that we're going to talk about. Um, in cryptography, okay, um, encrypting messages that were sent over the internet, that's a very important topic today banks and many other financial and legal institutions use encryption and so we're going to sort of dissect that and understand how they use that okay so in cryptography it is important to be able to find b to the nth power mod m for any base and any n value mod any m value okay with any mod modulus you want. But we need this to be done efficiently, even when those are large numbers, okay? So one way to do this is use the following bina binomial expansion, okay? Now see if you can follow this. First, we write the number n, which is your exponent, 
we write the exponent in binary num notation. Okay, it, as a binary expanded number. So it's sum a sub k minus 1 times 2 to the k minus 1 plus a sub k minus 2 times 2 to the k minus 2 all the way down to a sub 1, 2 to the first plus a sub 0. Okay, then we take, we're, we're trying to find b to the nth power, b to the nth power. Now b to the nth power, well I could replace the n with this long expression, bino, binomial, I'm sorry, binary expansion. I could replace the n with this binary expansion, which I've done. So what this means is I'm taking b to the power of this long expansion. But you know that if you have two things multiplied with the same base, you can add up the exponents. Well, instead of adding up the exponents, how about if we split the exponents or split the problem into a bunch of bases with the each of those terms in the addition expression, uh, and that's what I've done. b to the power of the first term times b to the power of the second term times b to the power of the third term, etc., all the way down to b to the power of the uh, a1, 2 to the first, times b to the a0, okay? So the next example shows how you could use that uh, in a specific problem, but it's kind of contrived because if you were wanting to do 3 to the 11th power, you wouldn't do this. You wouldn't go, you know, and change 11 to a binary representation and all this other stuff. You would just go, you know, 3 times 3 times 3 times 3, 11 times. I understand that. But I'm showing you how to use what we just learned to compute it because later we're going to have a situation where you can't do that. The numbers are so large and you have to follow the, an algorithm. So we first note that 11 is in binary representation 1011 base 2. So um, do you see that you have a 1 in the 8th place? 1 in the 8th place. You have a 0 in the 4's place. So you won't have 4 involved. You just ignore the 4. You have a 1 in the 2's place and a 1 in the 1's place. So you understand that 3 to the 11th power is 3 to the 8th power times 3 to the 2nd power times 3 to the 1st power. Okay? Because isn't 8 plus 2 plus 1 equal to 11? So that's one thing you can do is... Um, split it up like that and the reason you can split it or the, the reason why you might want to split this up is because you can get these powers of two uh, you know of the number three uh, their powers of the power powers of po it's the powers of two are being used as the exponent on the number three now 3 squared is 9, 3 to the 4th is, is 9 squared, which is 81, and then 3 to the 8th would be 81 squared, which is 65 to 61. So you just successively square the numbers, and that gets you there faster. So 3 to the 8th power is 6561, as we just talked about. 3 to the second power is 9, and 3 to the first power is 3. So because 3 to the 11th is 3 to the 8th times 3 to the second times 3 to the first, then it would just be the product of this, which is 177,147. So I know it seems strange to um, be doing it this way, but you'll understand why I looked at that example when we look at the next algorithm, alg algorithm five. All right, so 
this is called an algorithm for modular exponentiation. Okay, so algorithm five gives an efficient computer algorithm for calculating b to the power of n mod m. So in other words, that means what's the remainder when you take b to the power of n, get that, and then divide that by m. That's what's needed for encryption and decryption of, of you know, messages sent over the internet. If you have an encrypted file that's uh, sent over the internet, the, cal the computer has to be able to do this, these types of calculations efficiently. Okay, so if b is an integer, so it's just some base, n is the binary representation of the exponent, and then m is a positive integer that represents the modulus of this expression, then this algorithm will calculate in a pretty efficient way what the final um, value of x is, which is the remainder when you divide b to the nth power by m. Okay, so the output will be x, the base 10 value of b to the nth mod m, as I said. So uh, you can look how this does this um, in the algorithm. It inputs b and n, and n has to be as a bunch of binary numbers, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, you know, all of those things, base 2. And then it goes and does this. Um, it sets the power equal to b mod m. So that's the remainder when you divide b by m. All right. And then it goes from 0 to k minus 1. And then it, it just successively increases what x is and increases what the power is. And it just keeps. Um, doing that, but it's always finding the remainders, mod m, mod m. Both of these expressions find the remainders, okay? So you can look at example 12 on page 254 that will help you to understand how to use this algorithm, but I'm not just going to leave you at that. I, I want to show you an example that I explain as well. So we're going to take one more uh, slide to show you this, okay? So here's an example of using algorithm five. So this is algorithm five. I've repeated it here. Um, and I've added a little bit of notes here to this to help you understand this. N is this number here, which rep is the it's represented as a binary uh, expanded or representation number. And so you start off, x becomes equal to 1. All right, that's part of the algorithm. Um, now, I've traced this algorithm using 5 for the base, 11 for the n, and 74 for the m, the mod. Okay? But so the first thing that does is happens is x becomes equal to 1. So I set x equal to 1. And so the arrow represents, you know, x becomes equal to 1, right? Um, now, 11 is 1, 0, 1, 1 in base 2. So that's going to be our a0, starting on the, from the right side, a0 will be 1, a1 will be 1, a2 will be 0, and a3 will be 1. So that's the a's, right? Starting from the right side. So the first thing the algorithm does, as you see on the in the procedure here, is sets the power equal to the base mod m. Now 5 mod 74, well, five, when you divide 5 by 74, you get a quotient of 0 but a remainder of 5, because 5 isn't even over 74, so the remainder is 5. 
then you begin the loop. Okay, so in loop one, you are looking at if A0, because um, I is zero here, A0 equals one, which it is because A0 is the uh, first digit on, from the right, on the right side of the binary representation, which is one, you see in the binary representation of 11. So because that's true, then we're going to go on and do the x becomes equal to x times the power mod m. So x is starting off at 1, so 1 times the power, which previously was 5, so 5 mod 74. Now 5 mod 74 again is 5 and then it changes the power, the next line down changes the power into power times the power mod m. So 5 times 5 is 25 in mod 74 because still we're below uh, 74, so it's the remainder is, it, the quotient is 0 and the remainder is 25 in this case. So then it goes on to the next loop of this, so now i will equal 1. In loop 2, i is 1. All right, so then it looks at a1, is that equal to, to 1? Well, in, this is a0 here, the far right digit, so the next digit to the left is also a 1. So it is going to do, after the then, it's going to set x becomes equal to x times the power mod m. So 5 times the power, but the power has been set to 25 now. Now 5 times 25 is 125, and 125 mod 74 is 51, because if you, the remainder when you divide 125 by 74 is 51. Okay, and then it changes the power to 25 times 25 using this second command inside the loop. So 25 times 25, that's a, a 625. And if you figure out the mod, the remainder, when you divide 625 by 74, you get 33. So 51 and 33 are now the new value for values for x and for the power. All right, then in loop 3, when i is 2, now it looks at a2. Well, a2 is this um, third digit from the right, which is 0 here. So it's not equal to 1, so nothing is done after the then, except now it goes on to the next line and changes the power to be uh, 33, the previous value of power, times 33, power times power. And that's some large number, but the remainder when you divide that large number by 74 is 53. So it figures out the mod, which is 53. So now it goes on to the next loop when i is 3. When, when i is 3, then we're looking at a sub 3. Well, that's this digit that comes on the far left of the binary representation, uh, the 1. And that is equal to 1. So it does the, the part after the then. It sets x equal to x times the power, so it would be 51, which is the previous value of x, times the power, which is now 53. 51 times 53, it figures out that mod 74, which is 39, okay? And then it figures the power, because it's just gonna naturally going to do the rest of that loop which is going to be 53 times 53 mod 74, which is 71, but that's really not even used because we're done. When, when it encounters the next thing, then it finds that we're at k minus 1. k was equal to uh, 4, and k minus 1 is 3, uh, so it's done. It's finished, and now it goes to return x. So 
it returns the last value of x, which is this 39. So the answer to this is 5 to the 11th power mod 74 is equal to 39. Okay, so I just traced it through there for algorithm 5 uh, using the, the example of 5 to the 11th power in mod 74. Okay, and uh, this last comment is telling you when it stops since the binary representation 1011 uh, we have k equal to 4, so the algorithm will stop when i is 3, which is k minus 1. Anyway, so um, so that's the, uh, the rest of the notes, and it's kind of tricky. Some of this uh, binary representations or this uh, base 7 or base 5 or whatever base you want to talk about representations, they're not easy. Okay, so uh, let me know if you have questions, and then I'd like you to be able to, to do algorithm 5, but I know it's very difficult, so I don't know if I'm going to have that as a regular question or as some bonus question on an assessment. Okay, have a good day. Oops.